Hey folks, uh, this lesson is more simplifying radicals. So this is uh, module 3, 4. We're doing extensions on there. So anyways, um, if you are in my class, this was the answers to yesterday's lesson. So pause the video so you can check uh, your answers to your worksheet. And I'm going to go ahead and keep going. You should pause it if you need to see those, okay? All right, and then uh, so let's go ahead and simplify and use absolute value signs when necessary. Okay, we don't know what that means yet, and I'll try to explain that in this video. I did that with my second period today, and they kind of uh, had the deer in the headlights look. So if that doesn't work in this video, I'll show you just a trick, and then you don't have to worry about why, okay? But I'll try. <clears throat> okay, so this is yesterday's lesson, 7 root 24. Um, from uh, yesterday's notes, we get the prime factorization of that number inside, and then we need two on the inside that brings one on the outside, and then we multiply all those uh, outside numbers together and inside numbers together. Okay, so there's 24, it's those three twos and that three right there, so we'll go ahead and put that inside and replace, and then there's two twos on the inside, brings one two out, so we multiply seven times two for the outside and two times three for the inside. 14 root 6. Okay, this time we have the cube root, you guys. The cube root, uh, if we do the same thing, we get the prime factorization of the numbers inside, except for uh, that cube root, we're going to replace this part with this part right there. For cube roots, we do the same, but we need to get three of the uh, same numbers on the inside that brings one of them on the outside. So same thing, we get the prime factorization of 512, and if you don't know what goes into 512, start with what, what you do know. Two goes into that because it's even, so two times uh, 256, and again, two goes into that 128 times. 64, 32, 16, 8, and then finally 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. So these are 9 twos, so we're going to replace that 512 with 9 twos right there, okay? And then here, for cube roots, we do we need three of the uh, numbers on the inside that brings one on the outside. So three twos will bring one out, three more twos will bring one out, and finally three more twos will bring one out. And when we brought them all out, there's no more radical. So we go ahead and multiply five times uh, two is 10, 10 times two is 20, and then times two is 40. So our answer is 40, okay? All right, so when dealing with variables, you guys, sometimes we need to have absolute value signs. I'll do my best, okay? So for example, x squared, the square root of x squared, there's x times x, so two on the inside brings one on the outside, okay? Except when, um, um, uh, since x is being squared, this is always positive, no matter if x is positive or negative. So we, um, uh, when we square a number, it gives us a positive number. So um, uh, if I do like negative 3, for example, so we can't square root negative numbers, nor can we square root, um, uh, nor can we even, uh, we can't do even roots of negative numbers. That's what I'm trying to say. So a fourth root or a sixth root or a tenth root or an even root, it can't be negative inside of here. But since this x is being squared, this number is always positive. So x could be some negative number. So we can put a negative number in there and we'd still be okay because the squared part would be positive. This is where I started getting the deer in the headlights look. So for example, you guys, if x was negative 3, then negative 3 squared is 9, and the square root of 9 is plain old 3. Look, we up here we had uh, the square root of x squared gave us x. Over here, when x was negative 3, it doesn't give us x. It gives us the, the opposite of x. It gives us positive x, okay? So notice this negative 3 doesn't equal that 3. So, so this x, if x was negative, it wouldn't be equal to x right there. Are you confused enough yet? So if you're, if, um, to make this true, you guys, um, um, to uh, uh, make sure we don't run into this contradiction right here, if we square root uh, an x squared right here, then we need to take the absolute value of that right there. So we need absolute values, okay? So uh, if we had x cubed, then x could be a positive number or a negative number. It doesn't have to be. Um, it doesn't have to be positive, so, um, I, I'm sorry, it has to be positive because, I'm sorry, so negative 3 to the third is negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 27, and we can't square root of negative 27, so when this is uh, an odd power inside, this has to be positive no matter what, but if it's even, we can be negative uh, because when we square it, it makes it positive, okay? So anyways, here. 
Uh, let's, let's just jump to the rule. I, I feel like I'm confusing myself. So here's the rule right here. Uh, when we use absolute value signs with variables and radicals right here, uh, the index number, the number that's outside the radical sign, if it's even, uh, this is when we need to use absolute values. If it's even on the outside and the power to the variable is even on the inside, and one more thing, if it comes out as an odd power, then we need the absolute values, okay? All other cases, you don't need absolute values. So if the index number is odd, or if the power on the inside is odd, or if it comes out as an even power, we don't need absolute values. The only time we need absolute values is if the index number is even, and the power to the variable is even inside, and it comes out odd. All right, let's see if we can figure this out. So let's simplify. So the square root of 18x to the 6. Okay, so there's 18x to the 6, okay? So do like we did before, prime factorize. A pair of 3's come out. Three pairs of x's come out right there. Okay, and that leftover 2's left inside. Okay, now let's see if it followed. There's an imaginary 2 here because there's no number there, so it's even. That's even. It came out odd, so we need absolute values on that, okay? So it's going to be um, 3 times the absolute value of x to the third root 2. Whoops, I forgot my little root right there. Okay, let's see if I can fix that right there. Right there, okay. Okay, so how about this one here? The square root of x to the tenth. How many pairs of x's can we pull out? We can pull out five. Okay, now do we need uh, absolute values? Okay, it started off even. It was even on the inside and it came out odd. Yes, we need absolute values. So it's going to be the absolute value of x to the fifth. Okay, what about this guy right here? Okay, even even how many pairs can we pull out of 12 right there we can pull out six right there and, and since it's even on the outside we don't need it okay all right uh, how about this one x to the 13th even odd don't need it this has to be even okay so um, how many pairs can you pull out we can pull out um, uh, six pairs and there's one leftover x on the inside so x to the sixth root x okay this is the square root of x by the way okay all right, then it gets a little bit confusing. Sometimes uh, this 6 looks like it's the index number, but it's the exponent to the x right there. Okay, how about this one? How many pairs can we pull out of that? 7, and since it came out odd, uh, we're going to need absolute values on that. Okay, so x to the 7. So if this is even, and that's even, and it comes out as an odd answer, that's the time you need the absolute values. All other cases you don't. Okay, how about this guy? Okay, so this is the fifth root. This is the index number the fifth root okay so since that's odd I don't need it and since that's odd also I don't need to worry about absolute values I just go ahead and break those down right there the way we normally do okay so I'm going to do this one more time and then I, I'm not going to do this part right here I'll show you another trick okay so uh, I need five on the inside that brings one out so these five twos will bring one out there's five X's here that'll bring one out, and I have four left over inside. So we have, um, uh, there's the, the two from these guys. There's the X from these guys right here. And this five is the index number for the fifth root. It's not, it's not X to the fifth. It's the fifth root of five X to the fourth. Okay, so there's our answer right there. Okay, all right, and we don't need absolute values on that. Okay. All right, so here, this is the sixth root of 320, uh, x to the eighth, y to the tenth, z to the ninth. So what I'm going to do is represent x to the eighth as x to the sixth. Um, here's x to the eighth, x to the sixth times x squared, because I add those exponents. Here's y to the tenth y to the 6 times uh, y to the 4th. Here's z to the ninth right here, okay? So let's go back. It starts off even, 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 so I might need absolute values on these variables here. I don't need to worry about the z because that's odd right there. Okay, I need 6 on the inside that brings 1 out. So here's 6 twos. I'm going to have 1 2 out. Here's 6 x's, 1 x out. Here's uh, 6 y's and 6 z's, so 1 x, y, z out, and I need the absolute values around the x and the y because they came out as x to the first, y to the first. So it's 2 times the absolute value of x, y times z times the sixth root of the leftover stuff on the inside right there. All right, you guys, if you are in my class, I'm going to be giving you a handout, and if you're at home and you're in my class, here's the first part of the handout, so pause it, you guys. Okay, here's the second part of the handout. Pause it. 
Here's uh, the last part of the handout. It's one side, but that's all the problems on one side. All right, you guys, take care.